This is another instructional video by thecourtstore.com. This video on how to clean a court surface well is one in a series of videos on tennis court resurfacing. You'll find all of our videos on our YouTube channel and at our website, thecourtstore.com. First, we'll discuss the easiest part of the cleaning process, the removal of the loose dirt and debris from the court surface. This is best done with a backpack blower, a hand blower, or even a walk-behind blower if you have access to one. The proper technique is to start at one end or side and work your way all the way to the opposite end or side moving the loose debris and dirt as you go. If it's windy you should start at the end or side where the wind will be at your back otherwise you'll fight the wind as you try to move the dirt and debris down the court. Many pros like to carry a floor scraper in their other hand to pop up things the blower can't move by itself, such as bugs, uh, some leaves that are stuck, uh, bubble gum, things like that. If you watch closely, you'll see our man use his feet and hands to remove the items stuck to the court. The next task is to clean the algae or mildew from the surface. If less than 20% of the court is covered with mildew, it can be done by hand. Otherwise, it's best to use a pressure cleaner. Let's first discuss cleaning by hand. First, soak the area to be cleaned well with water. Then pour out a little straight bleach in a small area. Next, scrub the bleach into the mildew with an acid brush until it releases from the surface. You will repeat this process until you have scrubbed the area clean. If you're cleaning a large area, keep the area you've already scrubbed wet. If it dries, you'll just have to scrub it again.
If you're strong enough, you might want to consider using a good stiff bristle push broom to scrub the mildew. It's much more productive. After you've scrubbed the entire area, rinse it away with a good pressure nozzle on your hose. Don't just rinse the residue out of that area. Rinse it all the way off the court. Otherwise, it may dry and cause you to have to scrub it again. This is a neat little tool called the jet broom. It attaches to your garden hose and has six little pressure jets at the end that make uh, rinsing and moving the residue a little easier. You may find you haven't removed the mildew in the heavier areas completely. In that case, just repeat the process. If more than 20% of your court surface is covered with mildew, you really should use a pressure cleaner. You should start cleaning at the high end of your court slope and work your way down the slope. This way the residue is always flowing away from where you're trying to clean. It's just a side to side motion with a fan tip in three to four foot strips as you work your way down the court. You'll alternate back and forth between cleaning and then stepping back and using the fan tip uh, to move all of the residue away from the area you just cleaned and down the court. One other note, a three to four thousand PSI pressure cleaner with an output of three to four gallons per minute is most productive. The smaller units, let's say five to six horsepower, can reach the, the PSI you need but not the volume of water to be productive. This next attachment will demonstrate is even more productive uh, and makes the job much easier. It's called a surface cleaner and is available usually at most rental supplies along with the pressure cleaner. Coupled into your pressure cleaner hose, it cleans about a two foot path just by pushing it along. Because this unit uses two pressure nozzles, it requires a pretty powerful pressure cleaner around 4,000 PSI at four gallons per minute to make it work properly. This is what it looks like in action uh, from underneath.
you can clean in almost any pattern you'd like, either a small section or a large. But you will have to start, as you did with the wand, at the high end of the court uh, and move down the slope. You'll also occasionally switch back over to the wand to rinse the residue you cleaned down the slope of the court. When you're finished cleaning and the cord is dry, you're ready to move on to patching. Thanks for watching our video on how to properly clean a cord before resurfacing. This is one in a series of instructional videos on how to resurface a tennis court. You'll find all of our videos on our YouTube channel and our website at thecourtstore.com.